Welcome to the Heart Centered Entrepreneur Podcast. I want you to be rich. Yes, I want abundant financial success for your business. But I don't just care about your business making money. I care about you too. I want you to be rich in happiness, in the impact you make, in your relationships, and in how you give back. I'm Anna. I built my six-figure business as a side hustle while I was pregnant with my daughter in 2016. Now I've helped dozens of women do the same. I'm here to help you build a profitable, heart-centered, fully booked business with the latest tips on sales and visibility, with proven mindset hacks, and sneak peeks behind the scenes with what's working right now in the online space and in my business. Ready to make more money with heart? Let's go. Hi, sweet friends. This is how to make more money doing less work, spending less time, part two, because I have so much goodness and so much to rant about that I cannot fit it into one podcast episode. So make sure you go back and listen to last week's part one if you missed it. But basically, you know, there's so much in the online space about like quick fixes, silver bullets, like here's how you can make a billion dollars while not working at all. And like the truth is that business does take work, but there are ways to, again, work smarter and not harder. And I'm packing some real honest behind the scenes strategies that I give my clients especially my clients that are already having profitable, successful businesses that are getting ready to grow their business, make more money, right? Often it's at that point where they feel like I'm at capacity, right? I'm starting to get full. And in order to make more money, I'd have to sign more clients, which would mean more work and more stress. And I don't know if I want that, right? I don't know if I want to sacrifice time for my family, stuff like that. So hope this conversation is so useful to you. So I'm going to just dive right back in, okay? Okay. So these next two really have to do with the concept of, um, okay, so let's say for a minute you want to work 20 hours a week in your business, right? Say out loud right now the amount of hours you want to work in your business. I want you to know that it's okay to lock in the commitment to those hours, but trust that you can make more money on the hours that you have. Okay. I know that in general, it takes time to make money, especially in the first phase of your business. But in the second phase of your business, you really don't have to trade time for money because you can have team that works for you, right? You can have group programs where you're seeing multiple clients at once, right? But before we even dive into more of those strategies, I first just want you to realize and own that it's okay to own the amount of hours that you want to work, and trust that you can increase your money, you can increase your capacity to experience wealth, right? At the hourly rate. And you guys have heard me talk about this before, maybe on Facebook Live. like a big part of my work with my clients is allowing my clients to increase their capacity for happiness, increase their capacity for wealth, right? What that means is like when they sign clients, when they hit 5K months, 10K months, 20K months, right? Figuring out how to make that a new normal, how to make that your new floor, you know, if you think about like your ceiling, right? Instead of feeling like, oh, this was a fluke. Oh, I got lucky. Like, no, this success is my new normal, right? When we think about, oh, I will wait till I make more money to X, Y, Z. I want you to kind of flip that paradigm on its head, right? I want you to ask yourself, what is it that I'm wanting now, right? Is it that I want to take more vacations? Is it that I want to take Fridays off? And how do you start adjusting your calendar now to your ideal work week and making your work fit within that, right? As you build that trust within yourself that you will take vacations, you will take time off, it's going to be easier for you to experience and and receive more money, right? Because I believe like time expands to what we give it. I know this because like if I have 30 minutes to clean my house, I will bust my booty and get my house clean. If I have an hour and a half to clean my house, I'll take an hour and a half to clean my house, right? If I have 30 minutes to record a podcast episode, I'll get it done in 30 minutes, right? And so that same line of thinking, a lot of times my clients are like, okay, how do I, you know, force myself to stop working at three o'clock, right? My answer is like, How can you like go do something at three o'clock? It's very hard to just like stop at three o'clock and do nothing, right? But it's a lot easier to say, I'm gonna stop at three o'clock because I got a workout class at the gym that I love going to, right? Same thing for health coaches, right? That might teach a strategy instead of like not eating sugar, you might eat fruit instead, right? It's really that thinking of like, how do we do something instead of nothing? And so instead of saying like, oh, I'm going to wait till I make more money. I'm going to wait till this or that to create my ideal work week. One of the best things you can do to create more money in less time is start constricting your time now. Start respecting your time now, right? 
something I try to do at the start of the year is block off my vacation days, even if I don't know where I'm going on vacation yet, right? (laughs) I try to block off my CEO days where I'm doing like my visioning. Really get ruthless about what you want your dream week to look like and start living that now instead of feeling like that's a someday thing, right? And as you build trust with yourself, you'll figure out how to get work done and think savvier and work harder within those hours. Okay, related to that is a conversation my friend Sarah and I were talking about that we do, and it's called the bump. Um, And this just means like we look at our calendar and we allow ourselves to reprioritize as you grow and scale your business it usually means that you're you are often spending less t- time on with clients right initially you are spending all of your hours are kind of accounted for right for me it meant i was on like a lot of one on one client calls right but now as i've grown my business and a lot of my clients are in my mastermind right in group pods it means i have more quote unquote free time but it's not really free cuz i'm still doing other things like recording course videos, right? Like recording marketing content. So I'm still working. It's just more stuff that I have to hold myself accountable for, right? It's more things that are like flexible in their timing, which is honestly really nice in some ways, but in other ways, it's harder to prioritize and get done. And so I am continually guessing what I'll have margin for, but guess what life happens, right? Last week, my kids got sick, right? Um, Often I overestimate what I can actually get done in a given week. Anyone else? Anyone? Like I'm a really productive, ambitious woman. You are too, I'm guessing, because you're listening to this, right? And I know you can get a lot done, but often like we bite off more than we can chew when it comes to our schedule. And suddenly we have like a giant mouthful of brownie and we're like, oh my gosh, why did I think I could eat this whole brownie, right? And so the same thing with like, how did I think I could get like nine projects done this week when it was the week that like, it was my kids last week at school. So there's all sorts of kid activities, right? And my, you know, kids got sick and all the things. And so um, the bump just means you give yourself permission to reprioritize to see what's the priority and to put it off and you don't make yourself wrong for that. Not like, I can't believe I didn't get that done, but you know what? I'm grateful I have a business where I can put that off for now, right? And I can get that done next week. So allowing yourself to, and again, this is part of like the hours, right? What that means is you allow yourself to still keep the hours you want to in your business. You still keep the values you want to in your business. You still allow yourself to like tuck your kids into bed at night and read because you're like, at the end of the day, my values come first, right? And I want you to ask like, what do you most what do you most value in your business? A lot of my clients are mamas. And so one of their biggest values is their time with their kids, right? Some of my clients don't have kids, right? And they are digital nomads and they love to travel. So for them, it's like my freedom. I never want anything to encroach on my freedom. So whatever is that thing that you value most in your business, it's remembering to always keep that first, right? It's remembering to do the bump to prioritize what it is that matters most to you, family, travel, right? Allowing yourself to continue to prioritize that. Okay, number nine, how to make more money in less time is dun, 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 do less stuff. (laughs) As entrepreneurs, it can be so easy to have a thousand ideas. I don't know about you, but I get a lot of ideas all the time. I also have an idea parking lot where I... (laughs) I have an idea and often it's a great idea. And if I was nine people, if I had nine lives, I would do all my ideas and I would make money on all my ideas. But guess what? I'm one person. I've got a tiny but mighty team and I work about 20 hours a week in my business. And so what I do is I don't do all my ideas and it's a sacrifice of the ego, right? But this is the thing, right? One option is to put pressure on yourself to do all the things and you burn out (laughs) or you don't and you survive as an entrepreneur. I know I'm kind of being dramatic, but that's really the case, right? At the start of your business, it's good to do more and innovate. And sure, we want to keep innovating. But what I found is instead of innovating now and creating new things, I allow my innovation to go into my current products, services, and clients. I'm going to say that again, okay? (laughs) Instead of innovating and spreading myself thin and creating new programs, new services, new offers all the time, I allow my creative energy, my innovation, my Enneagram 7, my desire for fun and variety to go into 
innovating on my current projects and products. Some of you need to hear that message, right? And at first it felt constricting, but now it feels super freeing because guess what? It makes me a lot more money. It buys me a lot more time and I can go and enjoy my life and I can have variety and fun in my life right? And I think like, we don't have this conversation enough in the entrepreneurial world. Like for me, I hadn't, like I created a new course this year, Get and Coach. But before that, I hadn't launched a new course in I think three years in my business. And for me as an ENFP, I'm proud of myself. (laughs) That's hard, right? But it's like allowing yourself when you get new ideas, to write it down, to brainstorm, to lock in the idea, but then ask yourself, when's the best time to execute that idea? What's it going to cost me to execute that idea? And not just as far as money, but as far as like time, energy, capacity for me and my team. And just being really intentional on what we're adding on so that what we do do, we can do really well and make a lot of money doing it, right? Having fewer products, fewer offers, but making them super powerful, right? doing fewer things in our marketing, but doing them really well. You do not have to be on all the social media platforms, right? And really giving yourself permission to continually cut, to continue to reduce, to continue to just really look at what is bringing us clients, what is making us money, what is helping us have fun, and how can I really cut that down literally so that you can save time in your business, right? Number 10 is related, and that is repeating your stuff, right? I repeat so much stuff in my business, right? My paid, and there, I do remember a distinct point in my business where I had to do the shift. I was like, oh, when you're a mid-level entrepreneur, it's less about creating new stuff all the time. And instead it's like that freebie you already created, it's promoting it more so more people download. That mastermind you created, it's launching it again, right? That challenge you did, it's doing that same challenge again, right? That beautiful Instagram post that got a lot of traction, it's replaying that same post again and getting over yourself and just allowing yourself to repeat things so that you can layer things on. Like I think about the first time I ran it, people say like, Anna, your challenges are so amazing. They're like mini courses. But the first time I run a challenge, it's just like, social media posts. And then the next time I repeat it, I add videos. And then the next time I repeat it, I add worksheets. And then the next time I repeat it, I put it into like my course software. So it's like a mini course, right? Give yourself permission to repeat things so that they get better and better over time, right? Number 11, again, is related, focusing on your current clients. Stop chasing the shiny objects, right? Of course, we want to also grow our business and get new clients. But for me, and a lot of people make this wrong, right? Like, oh, I only get referrals and there's something wrong with me. Like, yes, I also believe we should always be getting new clients. We should be getting visible on social media and getting new organic traffic, growing our email list, growing our audience. Also, you serving and delighting your current clients is the best marketing and the best use of your time and saves you so much time because number one, you got to do it anyway because they're paying you money. Number two, it is really rewarding (laughs) when you get your clients good results and when you show up for them and it makes it easier to sell your products and services because you know you're showing up for your people, right? It also means that they're going to be happy and they're going to be returning to you right? It also means that they're going to be spreading the word about you and referring people that are likely a good fit for you and aligned with your values. So I think a big part of, again, making more money with less time is stopping looking outside and starting to look in your current circle, right? Okay. Number 12 is, I have this phrase, it is that creating things in advance is the best self-care you can do for your future self right? I think about this when I meal prep sometimes. Like last week, I prepped some like salmon meals for the week, like really kind of boring lunches. But as I ate lunch this week, every day, I was like, wow, I'm really doing self-care that I prep for myself in advance, right? And so often we're so willing to do so much stuff for everyone else in our life. But are you willing to do self-care for your future self by preparing things in advance, right? It does mean that it's a little bit of a delayed gratification. And again, like this is a shift at the start of our business. We're doing a lot of things on an adrenaline high. We're creating a social media post. We're posting it right away. We're getting likes and engagement. It feels really good. We're creating a group program. We're launching it. We're getting people to enroll and it's exhausting, but it also is an adrenaline high. 
right? So as you grow your business, yes, it gets less stressful. Yes, it gets more profitable. But here's the thing that's not talked about very much. It also gets a little more boring. For me, I'm okay with that because there's the trade-off of I'm making more money and I'm less stressed. So I'm okay with it being more boring. But some people panic and and get into this place of like, there must be something wrong because my business isn't as thrilling at the beginning. Same thing as a relationship, right? Think about the very start of a relationship. There's the adrenaline, there's the love hormones, it's exhausting, but you're kind of high, right? And then you get to like long-term love. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather have long-term love any day because it's more stable, it's more rewarding, it's more fulfilling. Same thing with a, with a business that's matured, Right. It's a little more boring, right? But in a good way. And so give yourself permission to release the instant gratification, delay the gratification and prep in advance in your business. This means writing content in advance. This means planning your launches in advance, right? This means um, you, even in your personal life, doing prep work in advance for yourself. And again, like allow it to be boring, but don't make that wrong. It's safe for your life to be boring. It's safe for your business to be boring. In fact, think about your team. Do you want your team to work in an environment that's always stressful where there's fires all the time? Or do you want them to have a predictable environment? Same thing for you. You should create a work environment that feels stable. And especially if you grew up in a house that was a little bit chaotic, right? That can feel normal to you. But what I want to say, right, it's safe to have a business that's regulated, that's stable, that's calm, that's profitable, where you're working part-time hours, it's safe to have a stress-free business. Your business does not have to be chaotic and stressful and this crazy emotional high. Same thing with, with relationships, right? It's safe to be in a relationship that's a little bit boring, right? That doesn't have this like toxic up and down roller coaster in it. Okay, not to rant, but there I go. Number 13, money mindset, money, mindset, money, mindset. Need I say more, right? So much of being willing to bring in more money while working the same amount of hours is your money mindset because you will sabotage time and time again if you believe that you are not worthy of making a ton of money in a small amount of time. If you believe that you have to grit your teeth and suffer to make money, right? And here's this thing, right? There's I do believe that you should be willing to work hard to make money, right? You should be willing to do anything in your business, right? In some ways, but it doesn't mean that you have to, you know, it's that whole philosophy of like, you should be willing in your brick and mortar business to scrub the toilets. Like you shouldn't be beyond anything, right? But it doesn't mean that you have to, it means that you should be willing to have that hard work ethic, but are you also willing are you willing to work hard for money, but are you also willing for money to be easy? It's the same thing what I say with my clients, right? Like I'm okay in a sales call if a potential client needs a lot of support in making the buying decision. I'm also fine if my potential client is like, take my money, I'm ready to go right now. It's being willing for both and making making neither wrong, right? Same thing with money. It's safe for you to work hard to make your money, but it's also safe for money to be really easy. And for my heart-centered ladies like you, that's the belief you need to work on a little bit. So maybe even as you're listening to Say Out Loud right now, it's safe for money to be easy. It's safe to make money in a way that's filled with ease, right? Really uh, like sinking into that, Right. Um, another piece that's related to this is really asking yourself, as I make more money, what am I going to do with the money, right? Because if you don't have a purpose for the money, more work is just going to seem like more work. And you're like, why would I do that when I'm already stressed, right? Instead of asking yourself like, yes, I'm going to work to make the money, but with this new money, I want to what? Do something selfish with it, right? Pay off your debt, save, buy a purse, buy a vacation, pay for your kid's private school. I don't care, right? But really making a purpose for the money, doing all that money mindset work. That is why in my mastermind, Sell With Heart, we talk about sales, but we also do all the money mindset journaling because if your mindset isn't in the right place, you're going to sabotage your sales process. Okay, number 14. (laughs) A way to make more money with less work is dun, 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 raising your prices. Raising your prices is not the only way to make more money, but it is one of the best and easiest ways to make more money and often 
align your clients because often when you raise your prices, right, you release some of the clients that maybe weren't the best fit for you anyway. And then you call in new clients that are ready to pay your higher level prices that are ready to show up for the work, right? And I want to remind you, as you raise your prices on your higher level work, and as you're fully funded in your business and making a ton of money, you can still give back and create approachable programs. I hear this all the time from my clients. Like, I want my work to be approachable. I want it to be affordable. When you are well-resourced with your high ticket work and you're making plenty of money, you can be super generous. You'll have time to create low cost courses. You'll have time to create free content that's super epic. You'll have margin to scholarship people into your programs if you want to, right? But remember that raising your prices and charging premium prices for the people that can't afford it for your high level work is of service to you and to them. So you know who this is for if you're listening to this. Is it time for you to bump up your prices? Is it time? Okay, number 15 is related to another one I was saying, but this is go after your personal desires. A big way to make more money in your business in less time, like we talked about like how time expands to the time you give it, is... And kind of like where I was saying, like, we often get antsy in our business. And so we're like, I want to launch a new offer. I want to launch a new thing, right? No, keep your business boring and make your life really exciting. That's my biggest advice. And honestly, how I've been able to grow this business to multiple six figures so consistently (laughs) and so happily and without burning out. and And I like do high touch client work. Like I really have a demanding business in a sense where I'm really providing high touch support for my clients. I'm really doing a lot, but I also don't burn out because my business is really boring. I repeat my offers. I repeat my content. I, we have my team and I have our systems on lock, right? I've allowed my business to get really repetitive, really boring, really systematized, really fine, well-oiled machine running, right? Because I allowed my business to get boring and I've made my life really exciting, right? Again, when you do that thing outside of your business that lights you up, right? Whether it's you want to be a mama, maybe you want to get in shape, maybe you want to travel the world, maybe you want to start a new relationship, right? Maybe you want to buy a home, maybe you want to invest in a property, right? Don't wait to do that because when you do that for me in this, you know, last season, I started dating and yes, that took a lot of time, but guess what? I found a way to make it work with my business right before that I was pregnant and I was running a business on very few hours, but that really made me efficient because I knew when I sat down, I had to get stuff done right? I was happy and fulfilled in my personal life. And so that means that when you do go to do the thing, when you go to write the piece of content, it flows really easy. When you go to work with your clients, you're happy and you're lit up, right? And so the when you allow yourself to have hobbies, when you allow yourself to prioritize your personal life, that makes you so much more efficient and it also forces you to work less hours, right? It forces you to be efficient, to be happier. Um, And so I would say like, that's honestly one of my favorite ones. Okay, I hope that these two episodes were helpful to you. I wanna hear which of these is standing out. Don't feel like you have to execute everything at once, but just ask yourself. I always ask my clients at the end of a mastermind call, what most stood out to you today? What most stood out to you? What is that nugget that you're like, ooh, that is it. That's the mindset belief that I need to shift. That's the action I need to take, right? And the second thing is what is your biggest action step? What are you going to do now moving forward to put that into action? Do you need to prioritize hiring a VA? Do you need to block vacation days on your calendar? Do you need to start working in advance more in your business? Do you need to repeat stuff? Do you that freebie that's in your Google Drive that hasn't seen the light of day in a while, do you need to maybe change the title or something, but promote that old freebie again, right? What most stood out to you? I would love, love to hear. And if all of this is resonating with you, I would love to invite you to my mastermind and mentorship, Sell With Heart, where I personally mentor you through all of these things, right? Strategies that actually last, strategies that actually work when it comes to making more money in your business on part-time hours as a busy mama, as an ambitious person, as a person that has 
faith and values and things that matter to you. These are the conversations that make the biggest difference for my clients that I see taking them from making a few thousand dollars a month to making significant change, right? Whether it's 5K, 7K, 10K, 20K months, right? Again, really doing the work and strategies that make business success last for the long term. Because that's the thing, I want you to make more money in your business, but I want it to be sustainable. I want you to make more clients but I want them to be aligned clients that make you happy, right? Like that's the thing about selling with heart. Yes, I want you to make sales, but I also want you to have a business that lights you up, that you enjoy. I want you to have a life that fuels you, right? Feel free to grab a link, grab a free clarity call with me if you're interested in learning more about my mentorship. But above all, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for hanging out today. Please hit that subscribe button so you can make sure to stay updated anytime a new episode drops. And I would love for you to join me in my free Facebook community. It's called The Heart Centered Entrepreneur. We discuss the podcast episodes. I regularly go live and do free trainings. And you may even meet your newest biz bestie. So you can join at heartcenteredcommunity.com. It's absolutely free. And I cannot wait to see you in there.